This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. Beauty is important to me. I think it's important to you too. But we don't talk about beauty in modern society much anymore. Beauty has become a four-letter word. Don't say something is beautiful. Don't say someone is beautiful. Because then you're leaving out the person or the something that is ugly. But here's the situation. Beauty is real. Beauty is not subjective. Ugly is real. Ugly is not subjective. Let me use an example to get right into the heart of the controversy. And believe it or not, I'm going to connect this episode to the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue cover and trend following. Yes, I promise to do that. I can think back to 1984 through the power of search. And I have this original magazine somewhere in my collection stuffed away. I think I saved for the first 20 years or so every swimsuit issue from Sports Illustrated. A nice young male thing to do. Starting maybe circa 82, 83, something like that. But in 1984, Paulina Porskova appeared on the front cover of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. I'm guessing she was 5'9 to 5'10, 115 to 120 pounds, maybe. Go look at the cover. I don't care what year you were born. I don't care if you're male or female. The cover from 1984 stands the test of time. All of us, if we're being honest, look at that cover and say, that woman is drop dead gorgeous. She's beautiful. Now, I guess we could analyze all the reasons why, but you just know it when you see it. You know beauty when you see it. Now, as a little side tangent here, Ayn Rand's book, The Fountainhead, is all about engineering of beauty, the beauty of a great building, the beauty of a great design. And to shift from the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue for just a moment, to shift from Ayn Rand for just a moment, I'm thinking of a bridge that I crossed recently in Saigon, Vietnam, a very modern suspension bridge. Whether you're up close to the bridge or whether you're far away from the bridge, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. That's from design. That's from engineering. That's from execution. The brilliance of some person or some team understood enough about beauty to create that. Now, I'm sure Paulina Poroskova probably did some fitness back in the day. She did some dieting back in the day. And she had some lucky genetics back in the day. But there's still beauty there. There's beauty for the bridge. There's beauty for this model that I'm mentioning. I can think of walking down a side street And Saigon just today, covered with tall oaks, interesting shops, cafes, very quiet in the heart of the city, a hidden oasis that no tourist would ever find. I'm not a tourist, so that's why I know where it is. But to walk down this street, such a variety of architecture, a variety of design, but all working together, somehow or another. And I walk by this one building, bright white, very open windows. I'm not really sure what it was. Was it a design shop for architecture? Was it a design shop for dresses? I don't know. But there were a few very attractive ladies standing, you know, 20 or 30 meters from me in the building. And I just thought to myself, beauty, that's just beautiful. 
And what feeling did I have? I had a nice feeling. I thought, wow, that feels nice. Let me shift it to trend following for a moment. Trend following is beautiful. It's beautiful because it's a form of engineering. It's a form of problem solving that deals very cleverly with a problem that investors face. How to trade. How to come up with a situation, a solution, a mechanism, a system, a strategy, whatever the hell you want to call it, to decide when to enter, when to exit, when to exit with a win, when to exit with a loss, how much to bet, and what markets should you trade. Now, if you can do that successfully, that's beautiful. Now, contrast it to what's not beautiful. What's not beautiful is some pump and dump scheme, somebody telling you they can predict tomorrow, some brokerage firm pushing you into something. The moment you start to have that feeling of like, shit, who is twisting me? Who is turning me into something that I don't want? It doesn't feel good. It's not beautiful. Now, of course, if you're not familiar with trend following, and you need to get into it, and you need to understand what it is, well, then you will get that feeling of beauty. At first, you might not because you're like, well, I don't even know what this is. I need to understand it first. I mean, Warren Buffett's strategy is beautiful. Now, some might argue it's destined to one day not work. Someone might argue that about trend following. But Warren Buffett, what he has done the steps that he has taken, the philosophy that he has espoused is beautiful. It's such a nice word, right? To appreciate something that is designed well. In my Sports Illustrated swimsuit example, we could say the model was designed well. In Saigon, we could say the bridge was designed well or the street that I walked down with the disparate architecture was designed well. And when you get nice design, you get beauty. When you see beauty, when you feel beauty, what happens to you? You smile. You feel good. Something changes inside you. Your emotion becomes more peaceful. Your anxiety drops. But we're living in a world where a significant number of people are fighting against beauty. They do not want beauty. They don't want beauty for the simple reason, in my humble opinion, because they're jealous or they're lazy or they're incompetent. There's all kinds of reasons. Let's shift it back to the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. I brought up 1984 as an exemplar, a model on the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue circa 1984 as the exemplar. Now, jump forward almost 40 years to today. We're no longer in that same situation because it's no longer about the pursuit of beauty. It's the pursuit of something else. Because now, and for all of you, perhaps weak-minded men, or perhaps you ladies who think I'm some type of bad guy for bringing this up, I really don't care because you're not being honest with yourself. But today, in 2022, Sports Illustrated doesn't go for beauty. It goes for obesity. It puts very obese models on the cover and tells the world, this is beautiful. Now, of course, I'm a guy. I'm straight. I like women. Somebody could take all of my examples today and shift it out and put a bunch of fat white men out there and use them as examples. Fair enough. That's not what I'm doing. So why do we do this? Why do we go from 1984, a thin, attractive woman, to several decades later, a woman who is literally morbidly obese? Why do we do this? Why did we do this? Why have we thrown away the quest for beauty? And before some of you smart alecks out there 
think that I'm just using some one-off example. Give me a break. I know exactly what's going on with the culture right now. America itself and many other Western countries are obese. And we're embracing and celebrating obesity. We're now saying obesity is positive. It's a good thing. It's acceptance. It's celebration. It's insanity. Who really feels good? Who really thinks an obese body shape is beauty? We knew from the time of the Romans, the Greeks, the ancient Egyptians, we all know what beauty is. Let's don't be so cocky in our modern age and think somehow or another we have advanced to some new form of beauty. No, not at all. Why is the Great Pyramid beautiful? It's beautiful just because it is. It was engineered to be beautiful. Why, if I walk down the streets of San Francisco and I see people taking a shit on the sidewalk or some homeless dude with a needle stuffed in his neck, mainlining heroin, why do I think that's beautiful? It's not beautiful. It's disgusting. You see, though, we need to communicate amongst ourselves because for whatever reason, the people who are in control of the power levers do not want beauty right now. They want to celebrate and accept ugly, ugly in all physical forms, whether it's a building, whether it's the street corner, whether it's an individual, whether it's a trading strategy. Ugly is the soup of the day. But what kind of life do you want? Is that the life you want? Who feels good about ugly anything? Now, of course, I'm speaking here, big picture. At some point in time in the future, I will be old and ugly. We all age. That's part of the deal. Now, of course, we can do that quite differently. We control to some degree how we can age. Let me get back to my Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue cover circa today. If we're now putting 250 pound or 300 pound people on the front of Sports Illustrated, their swimsuit issue in bikinis, and we're telling the world, this is body positivity, accept and celebrate fat. Okay, let's play this out logically. I'll play the game. How big do we go? If we're at 250 pounds today or 300, do we go to 400, 500, 600? How big do we go? And do we ever have an acknowledgement that there is a negative here, that there is a negative with the achievement of gaining all of this weight? Do we ever have a conversation about the health part? You don't see too many 90-year-old 600-pounders. Doesn't exist. They don't make it. I think everybody on the planet knows exactly what I'm saying today is true. Of course, many people will have an aneurysm or they will celebrate what I'm saying. But the people that are having an aneurysm, they really, if they still have a shred of Spock-like logical in their mind. They will stop for a second and they will say, I don't want my family member, I don't want my kid to get to be 300 or 400 or 500 pounds. And maybe we'll take a step back and we'll say, why are we doing this? Why are we allowing the gatekeepers? Why are we allowing the people who have the culture levers to celebrate all of this insanity, to celebrate ugly. Why? I don't know the answer. I don't know why anybody would want to celebrate ugly. I'm not saying it's the greatest book in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but I did think how Ayn Rand lays out the fountainhead. Howard Work's desire to engineer beauty. It's always stuck with me. There's just a feeling you get when you see that. You see beauty. I don't care how small it is. It could be a flower. 
coming out of the sidewalk. It doesn't matter. It's something to strive for. We all need to get back to a place where the individual is worried about beauty. Because if every individual is striving for beauty, society, civilization as a whole will thrive, will survive. If, however, we allow ourselves to be seduced by the gatekeepers, and if the gatekeepers tell us, you must invest in Terra Luna, some bullshit Ponzi scheme that we invented last week. If we allow ourselves to believe in that, which is by definition ugly, and you know it, we all knew it, just like we knew Pets.com was ugly, just like we knew in the big short, a stripper in Miami should not be owning whatever she was owning. How many, 10 condos or something? We all know what ugly is. There's no shortcuts. There is no shortcut to beauty. Beauty requires hard work. Beauty requires effort, discipline, a stick to it ability. What are we really trying to do here? Is somebody trying to convince me because they can eat 24 donuts, they're hot? They eat 24 donuts a day, so they're now smoking hot? Give me a fucking break. That's not true, and everyone knows it's not true. But there is billions upon billions of dollars being spent right now by the corporate types, by the government types, to convince us all that ugly is now beauty. To take it back to trend following for a moment, the idea that someone, some group of people, some group of people separated by a distance, each came to the beautiful idea I'm thinking of the movie, A Beautiful Mind, right? That they came to the beautiful idea that I can't predict the damn thing, but there's a price and it's moving. It's moving up and down. Maybe it's going sideways. Maybe it's trending up. Maybe it's trending down. But I can't predict the damn thing about that price, regardless of market. So what can I do with it? How can I solve this conundrum to give people an opportunity to do something with this uncertain, this volatile price? And someone out there had the great idea, the beautiful idea of something like trend following. And look, to go off on a side tangent again, I'm sure a guy like Jim Simons, who's got this very secretive shop managing untold billions I'm sure his shorter term strategies, if these are really how he makes all of his money, I'm sure his shorter term strategies are quite beautiful too. I'm sure there's a certain elegance to them, a certain logic, a certain engineering. And that's sexy. Engineering, logic equals sexy. We don't talk like this anymore. We should. I mean, if you go walk over a bridge, a suspension bridge, over a big river in any city, and if that bridge is beautiful, if that bridge is sexy, you just got to stop and you got to say to yourselves, wow, we did that. Some group of people were still being honest with themselves. They weren't just listening to the bullshit artist, the power grabbers, they're trying to seduce us with the message of ugly is now beautiful. That all ugly is beautiful. Take a group of ugly whatever and ugly whatever is now gorgeous. It's such a psychotic shift in cultural sentiment. I feel bad for younger people because they don't necessarily have one foot on the other side of when this operation started. This operation really started in the last 10 years. So a 20-year-old today, they've got 10 years of pure propaganda, pure nonsense. At least some fighters like, for example, Gen X me, I've still got a sense of what came before the operation underway today. Operation, everything ugly is now beautiful. But what's the real heart of the matter on where I'm going today? Ugly 
versus beauty, beauty versus ugly. It's a search for the truth. Beauty is truth. Ugly is not truth. Ugly is something else. The search for the truth gives meaning to us. It gives meaning to our lives. If we're not searching for the truth, we're just bullshitting ourselves. We're just going along with the mob. And if the mob one day says, yeah, go lynch that person or go kill that person or go do whatever, then people just go along with the mob. This is a unique point in history. Things are changing. Now, okay, somebody's going to say, oh, no, Mike, things have always been changing. No, technology is shifting us now. Too many people without an outside understanding, without their own understanding, are being programmed by very large concerns with messages, as I've said on this episode, that I don't understand. I don't understand the motivations. I don't understand the motivation of pushing people into ugly. I'm not even sure I have the right message today. Maybe this is just a starting point. Maybe this is just a shot across the bow, a wake-up call, my first salvo. But there's something wrong. I can hear that V for Vendetta speech in my head right now. But there is. There's something wrong. But ultimately, I'll bring it back to the individual, us. We can take steps. We can be honest with ourselves. And we can chase beauty. Whether that's the beauty in the individual, the beauty in the object, the beauty in the method. Chase beauty. Go after beauty. Don't let go of beauty. And don't let anyone tell you that something, someone, some method, some ugly something, don't let them tell you that ugly is beautiful. Stick to your guns. Know what the truth is. That's the only way to live. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.